Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about the all new Nikon Z6 II, which is my very first mirrorless camera. I sort of bought this to experiment with mirrorless systems, and uh, I'm going to be comparing this with its DSLR equivalent, which is my good old Nikon D750 which I have been uh, using as my primary camera for the last uh, four or five years. So these are my first thoughts on mirrorless and how uh, I think they will be useful in especially for wildlife photography. So let's find out. One of the very first things that you would notice on uh, mirrorless systems is that the size of these cameras has gone down uh, significantly, I would say. And with that reduction in size, the size of the buttons are also a little uh, a size smaller than what they are on the DSLRs. But I think that's okay as long as uh, you know the button layout remains the same, which is to a great extent they've done a good job because uh, uh, you know you're going to be using these two cameras interchangeably, so you don't want the layouts to change because it, it's going to be crazy with each cameras having their own layouts. So especially the play button, the delete button, the uh, AF buttons, the exposure locking buttons, ISO, exposure control, everything's pretty much the same. So it should be a smooth transition or if you're one who's going to use them interchangeably like me, I think um, uh, it should be fa fairly easy to switch between the two cameras. On my D750, I had just about 51 AF points clustered around the center of the viewfinder. So this was especially difficult, you know, when you're making, uh, let's say, habitat images and the subject is all around the corners of the viewfinder. So there usually never is an AF point where I want one. So I used to use the nearest point to sort of focus on the subject and then recompose the scene and then, you know, press the trigger button. Now with the Z6 II, it has about 273 AF points and what I really like is that the AF points sort of cover the entire frame, the entire viewfinder, which means there's a focus point wherever you want on the screen and you can you know move it around and place it where you like. So that's going to make life a lot easier, especially for shooting you know habitat images. All mirrorless cameras have moved towards uh, electronic viewfinders against you know optical viewfinders on the DSLR systems. The EVF on the Nikon Z6 II is very uh, sharp, very vibrant, the colors are very real and it's super bright. And that is really helping me you know, focus in low light which is usually the scene in our jungles. And the, the bright EVF sort of helps me perceive the scene quite well before I compose and shoot it. Well, shutter noise can be a very annoying thing on safaris other than startling the animals. It also kind of pollutes people's videos, you know, when people want to make a nice video of the scene and then, but then all the DSLRs are all going, you know, yeah, so that can really get annoying and good thing is that mirrorless cameras these days and the Z6 II especially are able to shoot absolutely silent. There's a little sound which you can configure if you still you know like the sound of shut shutters or you know if you want to know if you've taken a picture or not. If you want that sound feedback you can have it on otherwise it's dead silent. All right, so let me show you uh, how the Z6 II sounds like uh, when you have that sound, little sound configured. Yeah, that's how it is. But if you don't like to have that sound, you can go into silent photography and turn that on. And now you would see that it's going to be absolutely silent. Yes, that's how it is. Since the mechanical shutter is out of the way, the mirrorless cameras are able to do much faster frame rates than ever before. The Z6 II is able to offer like 14 frames per second 
and that's an incredible frame rate and the best thing is that it's able to sustain that speed for a longer time like on my D750 though it can take off at let's say 7 frames per second it used to slow down a bit after like 4 or 5 seconds that's because the memory buffers are getting exhausted and as the camera is moving images from the buffer to the memory card it's going to cut the inflow but on the Z62 I'm able to shoot like 10 or 15 seconds before the buffer is exhausted and there is a slowdown I think that's an incredible improvement comparing these two cameras The most critical concern I have on the Z62 are blackouts. So what a blackout essentially means is when you're shooting in the continuous mode and when you have your uh, fingers pressed on the trigger and you're shooting continuously, in between the frames there is going to be a blackout in the viewfinder. And that is probably less than a second, it's very minimal but it's still visible. And that's going to be a problem especially when you're shooting uh, fast moving subjects. Let me explain. Let's say you're shooting a bird and the bird is just about to take off. So you would probably have, let's say, single point or dynamic area or whichever autofocus mode you use. You would have the autofocus point on the bird. And as the bird begins its takeoff, you would press down the shutter and then pan the camera in the same direction as the bird moves. But the problem here is when you have the viewfinder blacking out in between these continuous shots you might and, and during that blackout if the bird sort of changes its direction then you might lose track of the bird or you may uh, not be following the bird now that is a very serious issue because all your shots are going to be out of focus or probably the bird is going to go away from your frame if there wasn't a blackout you would be easily able to track the bird but the blackouts are going to sort of disrupt that process Wildlife as you know is very time sensitive so my next concern is about a small lag in the viewfinder and uh, especially let's say when uh, you're on safari and then you see something immediately you turn on the camera and bring your eyes to the viewfinder but the viewfinder takes about a second or two before it can come up so this is going, going by the frame rate of this camera this is going to cost me like 28 frames that's a lot to lose especially in wildlife and I hope the lag is somehow addressed or fixed in the next versions of this camera. That's all I have with regard to the concerns for now. I'm still testing the autofocus system uh, on the Z62 and I'm comparing it uh, regularly with my D750. I'm trying to do more birds in flight to really find out if the AF system's gotten any better. So I'll keep you guys posted if I see something interesting. Well, if you look at history, uh, the internet was futuristic technology, the mobile phones were futuristic technology and uh, when we moved from analog film to you know digital cameras to DSLRs, that was a very futuristic jump. But if you look at DSLRs to mirrorless, I don't think the technology is that big a futuristic jump. But I strongly believe the future always belongs to the marketing folks. So if they won't stop making DSLRs and start pushing out only mirrorless bodies, then the future sort of forcefully belongs to the mirrorless. That's all I have about this uh, review. I hope the video is helpful and thank you.